Hey folks and welcome back to the channel. It's been a few months now since Intel unveiled a first glimpse at its upcoming new CPU architecture during Computex. And now during IFA, right here in Germany, the second generation of Core Ultra CPUs is finally being officially announced. While we did get some early hints on time with the first devices, it will still be a couple of weeks before we can do our proper reviews, but we still wanted to give you a little bit of an update on what LunarWig will or will might be capable of. With the new family of CPUs, Intel is also going a very different way than AMD. And very much like Qualcomm, the Lunar Lake product stack consists of a variety of CPUs. Still, where Team Red Strix Silicon is basically one CPU with such a wattage flexibility that it can easily drive your Finalite notebook like the Zenbook S16 or being a capable gaming or creator companion for notebooks like the ROG Zephyrus or ProArt P16 Lunar Lake might offer more SKUs but is really focused on that Finalite segment. And judging from the actual products we have seen so far, it might also be reserved for the more higher-end market, leaving the entry level either to Meteor Lake powered notebooks or giving Qualcomm some breathing room with their X Plus Silicon. In general, the Core Ultra 9 sits on top naturally, while some of the SKUs are only differentiated by their memory configuration, between 16 and 32 gigs. But yeah, getting through these product names will be quite a challenge in the months to come. But of course, this is again all theoretical information for now, and we will have to wait and see what the market looks like in a couple of months. So let's focus on Intel's new baby for now. Judging from the demos and the information we have been given, it seems like Intel gave up the CPU arms race for good, at least for Lunar Lake, and tried to instead deliver a more rounded package with some careful balancing between pure CPU computing, integrated GPU acceleration, and of course efficiency, so you can keep using your devices for longer when being out and about. I can easily get behind this reasoning. If you think about it, all modern CPUs are basically fast enough for almost anything. So instead of pushing for higher Cinebench scores, scaling back a little on the CPU side of things to focus on better efficiency and a much more powerful GPU, which is doing the bulk of the heavy lifting when it comes to modern applications anyways, makes a lot of sense in my opinion. And before we get into all the new information we got at IFA, if you want the general gist of what Lunar Lake will offer, please check out our initial video from Computex. I will link it in the description below. Of course, Lunar Lake's main goal is efficiency, and without quoting all the fancy technical buzzwords, judging from what they showed us, with data collected with real-world laptops that are going to be available soon, it seems like they achieved their goal of not only offering longer battery life, but also boosting performance. Regarding performance, Lunar Lake will be available with 4 performance and 4 efficiency cores, and interestingly, the P cores are no longer hyper-threaded. Still on the core alone, we will get around a 20% performance improvement over what Meteor Lake was offering, which will put Intel ahead of the pack, at least on the Windows side of things. All in all, we will most likely see a performance benefit in some workloads, especially in the range below 30 watts. When moving beyond that, Meteor Lake or Strix Point will most likely be faster, even though that additional performance will come at the expense of higher power draw. On the GPU side of things, in addition to the official data, they also showed a few live demos that gave an early glimpse of what to expect. And regarding gaming, we have seen a Lunar Lake system running F1 2024 side by side with a Strix Point equipped S16. And both laptops apparently ran the game in 1080p, high settings, with ray traced shadows, and their individual upscalers in performance mode. So that means FSR for the AMD system and XES S14 Blue. And while there was some fluctuation, I barely saw it dip below 50 FPS, which put it ahead of the 890M in the Strix Point Silicon, and the built-in GPU in Lunar Lake also seems to deliver not only better image quality with its upscaling, but an overall much smoother and less choppy experience. Again, this is most likely a very hand-picked title, so your mileage will vary depending on your individual game. But as a preview, this already looks pretty promising. Compared to Meteor Lake, for example, we will get a pretty solid boost of around 31%, a still pretty impressive 16% against AMD, and compared to Qualcomm, well, these numbers should be obvious. Again, touching up on XESS, while the Lunar Lake GPU is in general faster natively already, Team Plus Upscaler adds quite a healthy boost to average FPS. And if the comparison between F1 2024 is any indication, add much better image quality as well. 
On the creator side of things, we saw some pretty interesting demos too. With Blender, for example, cutting render times in half on a sample project compared to Meteor Lake. This actually makes me quite excited to try one of these new super thin notebooks for our video editing workflow in Resolve. But enough with the technical talk, what about actual laptops? So far, we have seen quite a few notebooks that will run with Luna Lake at launch. Some of them all new designs, but interestingly, some designs already available right now with competing CPUs like Dell's XPS 13, which will allow us to do some very apples to apples comparisons in the near future. Of course, ASUS is also around with the scaled down S14, which I am actually quite excited about since I really enjoyed the bigger brother, the Strix Point equipped ZenBook S16, which we reviewed a while ago. MSI also showed us an updated prototype of their bigger claw, but unfortunately, these puppies will not be available for quite some time. But that should already be it for today. Again, this is early if much more substantial information compared to what we got at Computex. But it's still information we cannot validate for now, so take everything with a grain of salt until we can get our hands on final review samples. But everything so far looks pretty promising in my opinion. And as I said earlier this year, we as consumers will have some pretty great options to choose from with really good CPUs powering a bunch of very street looking laptops in the months to come. Luna Lake also looks like it could not only be your everyday notebook CPU, but also quite interesting for casual gamers or creators if the software or games can properly take advantage of the hardware. But please folks, let me know what you think. Now that we already know what Qualcomm and AMD bring to the table, which mobile platform would be your choice at the end of 2024? Sound off in the comments below. Thanks a ton for watching, make sure to subscribe so you do not miss our remaining EFA coverage in the days to come. My name is Alex, you have been awesome and I cannot wait to see you all in the next one. Take care.